the deserts of Namibia are witnessing a silent revolution. Well, almost silent. Guns and cattle have stormed the homeland of this master of the sands, the black-backed jackal, forcing it to flee. It is also nicknamed the African wolf, although it doesn't usually live in packs, unlike its cousin. Pressure from farmers has forced it to fall back over the past 10 years to Namibia's desert coasts, where it has exhibited some rather extraordinary behavior. A new diet and a new social organization. The vast expanses of the wild African savanna are disappearing. Trails, roads, and sheep flocks announce man's arrival, to which wild animals like jackals must adapt. To protect their livestock, farmers have declared an all-out war. For more than a century, eradication campaigns have attempted to stamp the jackal out. But in vain, they have only displaced it. Today, most live in national parks, alongside endemic creatures such as the blue wildebeest. Others, about a hundred, like this young male we're going to follow, accidentally took another route on their exodus, filled with dangers and surprise. The jackal has demonstrated a remarkable ability to survive both with and without man. It drinks at artificial water points created by man, like its noisy neighbor, the Namaqua sandgrouse. Unlike the sand grass, the jackal is able to live alone and adjust its daily rhythms. To avoid crossing the path of armed men, like the European wolf, the jackal has adapted its movements and way of living. In inhabited areas, the jackal moves under cover of night. Surviving means staying far from men, their roads, their cities, and their lights. In southern Africa, light diminishes and the population falls the closer you get to the Atlantic coast. Capable of covering tens of kilometers a day, a juvenile jackal tries to establish a viable territory where food resources are sufficient for it to start a family. It's not a picky eater. But giraffes will remain forever out of reach. Weighing between 6 and 13 kilos, a jackal will not attack large herbivores. And measuring only 40 centimeters at the withers, grassy plains are not a jackal's favorite hunting ground. They prefer the desert or scattered fields. On the road with the morning sun on its back, this jackal finds the kinds of territory it prefers in the western part of Namibia. In man's absence, the jackal can resume activity in daylight hours. In order to cross these dry terrains, it stops on the way at drinking holes, like some other unexpected residents of these deserts. Wild horses. They were brought to Namibia, then abandoned by the Germans during the First World War. They have since adapted to the scarce resources here. 
but the law of the desert controls their numbers. When drought drags on, the equine population decreases. Venturing far from mortar holes, the jackal himself is ruled by these laws. Death awaits those who cannot find water once a day. Fortunately, all prey, dead or alive, is not only a source of food, but also a source of water. To find it, the jackal relies on its sense of smell. With 35 times more olfactory cells than man, the jackal's nose is a million times more sensitive than ours. In the middle of the desert, the jackal's world is an invisible city of fragrances and odors. To find his way, his nose is his GPS. Keeping his nose wet will make sure he finds the next meal. All the jackals that wander the Namibian desert are attracted by a smell that permeates the dunes. The smell of the Atlantic Ocean. The Namib Desert is a coastal desert, perhaps the oldest desert in the world. For 80 million years, a cold ocean current arriving from Antarctica has prevented oceanic air masses from releasing the moisture they contain as rain. The border between the desert and the ocean has an evocative nickname, the Skeleton Coast. A narrow no man's land wedged between two hostile environments where sea spray carries the smell of trespasses. For a jackal, locating those smells is a matter of life and death. The skeleton coast is a magnet for jackals. Once they arrive, they never leave. The ones which survive are extremely adaptable. Racked by hunger and dehydrated, unable to drink the salty ocean water, the jackal is content with the remains of an unfortunate fellow jackal. To survive in these severe confines, the jackal must find fresh protein capable of quenching thirst and taming hunger. Jackal can only rely on his sense of smell and the generosity of the ocean to bring meals within his grasp. Fabulous protein transfer between the ocean and the desert. This Cape penguin exceeds a jackal's daily calorie requirements. In anticipation of an uncertain future, he digs a disguised pantry in the sand. Only his sharp sense of smell will recover it. gives and takes away. This sailor's adage is particularly true in a bay south of the Skeleton Coast, 
situated on the border of Namibia with South Africa. Baker's Bay, a bay hidden in the desert and from humans. The bay is in fact located in a prohibited area because it may be home to diamonds. The Namibian state and mining companies have forbidden its access. As a result, this no man's land became a national park in 2004. A piece of good luck for jackals on the lookout for protein. Cape fur seals. Thousands. As far as the eye can see. Musky scents. The jackal's nose is enticed. But how to catch one of these ocean going barrels? remains to be seen. In October, the female seals grace the beaches. They join a harem jealously guarded by a male, recognizable by his square muzzle and sumo wrestler physique. The female seals give birth to a single unique pup, recognizable by its black fur. Mother and baby recognize each other with a distinctive cry a voice signature of sorts. To find each other in the midst of this crowd, seals must keep calling to each other. Consequence, the colony is an ongoing concert of seals looking for each other. While one pup has found sustenance, others are still looking. But their mothers are not necessarily on the beach. The females make frequent trips offshore to feed and replenish their milk supply. Pups group into nurseries, awaiting the return of their mothers. In this heady environment, the opportunistic jackal looks for an easy meal. Like a small seal, whose mother hasn't come back from her fishing trip. Faced with such choice, long dead pups don't interest this diner. He prefers fresh meat. Jackals will choose preferably young, weak, and recently deceased pups. Curiously, his daily needs are very low. An adult only requires 2% of its body weight, the equivalent of a small seal steak per day. In times of plenty, he doesn't even bother with a doggy bag. It leaves the leftovers for the silver gulls, the beach scroungers.
Every day, the jackal goes out looking for a fresh steak when it's available. After exhausting the stocks of weak pups, he tries his hand at some rather more boisterous youngsters. But it's not as simple as it looks. Seals have strong jaws, a very thick skin, and above all, are very light sleepers. Hunter has a trick. He will try to make himself disappear. And to do so, he must first get rid of his own smell and replace it with a mixture of scents from the bay. A few notes of seal musk. and some subtle undertones of cormorant carrion, and whale oil, without forgetting a smattering of seal urine. Has he really vanished from sight and smell? It would seem so. These scents don't fool another discerning nose in the area. This three-legged jackal. His right foreleg was damaged during a fight and he can no longer hunt. His handicap has turned him into a scavenger. He scrapes a living from the success and tolerance of other jackals. If the hunter has had his fill, he will make little objection. Otherwise, the weakest will have to comply with the rules of the strongest. This scavenger is the bay scapegoat. He will always be the last in line. But he is not alone. Several dozen jackal have discovered the successful hunt in Baker's Bay. And they all want to enjoy the hunter's bounty. And they must be quick to get ahead of a crippled jackal and a mangy jackal, skinny and hairless. Racked by hunger, the scavengers constantly try to defy the hunter. A war of position.
battle they eventually win by sheer weight of numbers. In Baker's Bay, jackals hunt when their health and size allows. They become scavengers by default. Hunters put up with all kinds of scroungers, as long as resources are abundant. And they get a digestive nap. Amongst the most unexpected scavengers, the brown hyena. Hunted down by farmers, fewer than 8,000 brown hyena survive in Africa. The skeleton coast is one of their last refuges. The brown hyena's sense of smell surpasses even that of jackals. It detects carcasses at a distance of several kilometers and will come and steal them. No other hunters or scavengers can compete with it. Inevitably, from the confines of the arid desert, other jackals arrive. So the hunter needs to stake out a claim to its prey and territory. A marker in the form of a seal skull and some personal fragrance, these are the first signposts. At all strategic points, the jackal marks its territory. Woe to him who would try to steal its lunch. But who will dare challenge him? A female. As a crafty sign of submission, she looks away. She asks for a mouthful. Another sign of submission, used by all members of the canine family. The hunter investigates her scent, and she pays him the same courtesy. They unite for life, bonding by smell. Jackals form monogamous pairs and are constantly aware of the scent, so the mood of their partner. Their communication also involves a series of different postures. A raised tail means, you are annoying me. A lifted leg Flat ears, tail between the legs, show submission. By the means of this protocol, in which the female will always bow to the male hunter, couples share their lives and their territories. And even their hunting method. Including olfactory camouflage with whale oil. As a couple hunting, jackals are more effective than they would be alone, especially for spotting seals, to round them up and finish them off. but they also increase their chances of being spotted.
Few scavengers mean the couple can defend their prey. While one feeds, the other chases intruders. The female has a larger meal than usual. She will have to leave the beach soon and isolate herself in the shelter of a den for several weeks. The female nurses for six weeks, but the young stay put for three months in the burrow with their mother. During this time, the male feeds his mate. Every day, he brings the same dish of the day, seal steak. The den is a safe haven, and it's cool. Outside, summer arrives, and the hot weather. To cool themselves, fur seals raise their fins in the breeze. Or will immerse themselves in the cold waters of the Atlantic. In the middle of the waves, they have nothing to fear from the jackals. Neither do they on the beach. The hunters rest when the sun is high. Meanwhile, the infant seals grow and molt. Scratching themselves all over, they get rid of their black down to show off their brown adult coats. They now weigh around 15 kilos, nearly three kilograms more than an adult jackal. Up against a complicated task, the female has left the burrow to help the male hunt. They will have to use all their jackal wiles. teeth are no longer able to pierce the seal's thick skin. What to do? The situation is complicated. To make matters worse, with a lack of carrion to steal, the brown hyena is taking action. These attacks are extremely rare. They make up less than 3% of its diet, but its strong jaws help it seize the seal pup and drag it into its den. Up against so many difficulties, the couple find comfort in each other. In relation to the wolf, the jackal also has a rallying howl. Hmm. 
message received. This one is probably a distant cousin. Every individual has a unique howl, and jackals only ever hunt in families. But can one more hunter make a difference? doesn't seem so. The seals have become too tough, too organized. The alliance dissolves, and the jackal couple remain with their problems. Huge problems. But is a partnership possible with the brown hyena? No, it hunts alone. Only experienced scavengers can share their prey. The arrival of autumn is not going to help the hungry couple. Following six months feeding in the bay, the young seals venture out into the ocean, where they will spend the next three years. On the beach eroded by storms, only adult seals are left, sheltering from the wind. For the jackal couple, finding food has become urgent. But the king-size menu is totally out of their reach. There remains one solution finding their doggy bags buried in the sand. Not easy with the wind, which chases away the smell of carrion. Got it. Dried meat protein and bone calcium. The daily minimum intake during the enforced privations of winter. In times of food scarcity, these jackals don't waste their energy. Their body metabolism slows down, and they survive by becoming zombies. Over the long winter months at empty beaches, and kill many scavengers.
Between 2012 and 2015, the austral winter has had dramatic consequences for the bay jackals. Numbers have fluctuated between 120 and less than 10 individuals. Salvation arrives in the form of newcomers and effective hunters who allow the next generation to leave the burrow when spring returns. White coats and fluffy hair. There are up to eight pups per litter. But in Baker's Bay, only two or three survive the winter and make it to spring. And spring is synonymous with the return of the young seals. they will have to learn how to hunt. They need a lesson from seasoned hunters, their parents. A father's howl sounds the rallying call. The lesson will begin. First, Find an isolated seal. Second, grab it by the throat. And hide it out of sight. This is how a jackal should exhaust a young seal. One by one, the young jackals get to try themselves. While the male prevents the seal from struggling back to the ocean, the young must learn to immobilize their prey while avoiding its sharp teeth. Time is running out. Scavengers have found the hunt. The jackal parents must finish off the seal. The lesson is over. At the dinner table, the jackals have a pecking order. First the male, then the female. The young must wait their turn. And beware he who disobeys. Mealtimes are an opportunity to socialize, 
particular postures show respect to elders. <laughs> Only after the signs of servitude are they invited to lunch. Just in time, before the inevitable arrival of the scavengers. <coughs> to allow the young to finish their meal, the parents protect the carcass. So once the family has eaten their fill, or when scavengers become too numerous to control, the male abandons the carcass to the interlopers and treats himself to a nice snooze after lunch. And just in time, as his family could not have fought off all these ravening scavengers, studies have shown that against the scavengers, bay jackals feed more successfully when they work in groups of up to four individuals than when they are alone or working as a couple. Isolated by this coastal desert, the black-back jackals hunting in Baker's Bay have evolved some very unusual jackal behavior. Here, these solitary individuals with a diverse diet eat only one type of prey, seals. And hunting them requires group collaboration, which leads to a division of roles after a long apprenticeship within the family group. We've only just come to understand that jackals transmit this know-how. young reach adulthood, they go out in search of new territories. New companions, and spend the rest of their days hunting and starting new packs. <laughs> 